What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons. Today I'm going to be comparing the Prismacolor and the Copic markers to see which ones you guys would prefer. So if you're interested in getting into alcohol markers or anything illustration related, then this video is for you. So let's say you look online for alcohol markers. The first brands that you will see would be either Prismacolor or Copic. And both brands of markers are great. I use them both to this day to make all my illustrations. When I began to make illustrations, I started using Prismacolor markers and then I slowly evolved into using Copic markers and during that time period I was also learning about Copic markers, what they are, how to use them, how to blend them, because that's what makes them so popular. So I eventually evolved into getting my own set of Copic markers and after then I was building up my collection of Copic markers. So Prismacolor markers are a good starter tool when it comes to making marker illustrations and by using Prismacolors for like a period of time you get a feel on how alcohol markers work and also gain knowledge on alcohol markers in general. And then over time you'll feel comfortable with upgrading to Copic markers which is like top tier brand when it comes to alcohol markers. But now onto the video. So first I'm going to give you some information price wise then we're going to talk about the different sets that these markers come in the different features of each marker and then towards the end I'll do an illustration with half being Copic markers, half being Prismacolor markers. That way you gain knowledge on the two brands of markers and see which one works best for you. So now that that's done, let's get to the video. So depending on where you buy these markers, Copic markers range between 7 to $10 per marker, which is pretty expensive. And Prismacolors go for like a dollar less expensive. So let's say a Copic marker is like $7.99 or $8. Prismacolors would be like a dollar less, so it'd be $6.99 or $7. But the price may vary depending on where you buy these markers from, but I'm basing these prices off of this website here. But Copic markers do come in different shapes and forms. Like for instance, there's a Copic Chow marker that would run about the same price of Prismacolor markers. Because Copic Chow markers have a smaller barrel to them, and they hold a bit less ink inside compared to Copic Sketch markers. The price of those may be the same as Prismacolors, maybe just a little bit lower, but they are less expensive than Copic Sketch Markers. So just keep that in mind. So let's talk about the different sets that these markers come in. Now for Copic Markers, they come in sets of 3, 6, 12, 24, 36, and 72. And it looks to me like they do have a colorless blender, so that way if you're drawing and you go outside of your lines or whatever, your colorless blender helps blend that color back into your space so that way you it won't look like you went outside the lines. A lot of alcohol marker brands have that, but just to throw that out there for you guys. And the cool thing about these markers is that they are refillable. So that way if your marker dries out, that means it's ran out of ink. So to accommodate for that, you'll need to refill with the corresponding color so that way you don't have to spend another seven to ten dollars to buy a whole other marker when you could just refill it. And these markers are available pretty much anywhere and even at your local art store. The reason I say that is because some of these art stores that are around here may not carry a brand of markers that you may be wondering about. So that's why a lot of stores carry just Copic markers and depending on the store that you go to, they may have just the Copic markers and the store brand markers and that's pretty much it. But Copic markers are available in a 358 colors, which is like a very, very big color selection. Maybe not every color in the world, but a lot of colors to choose from. However, going back to the Copic Chow markers that I brought up earlier, they are only available in 180 colors, which may be another reason why they're a bit less expensive than Copic Sketch markers. And depending on what store you go to, the Copic Chow markers may not be available for display, and some stores may carry Copic Sketch markers individually, and maybe Copic Chow markers in a set, just it all depends on what store you go to. And the Copic Chows are also available in sets of 3, 6, 12, 24, 36, and 72. But pretty much everything I said about the Copic Sketch markers corresponds to the Copic Chow markers because they hold the same ink. There's not much of a difference between those two. But let's get on to the Prismacolor markers. Prismacolor markers are available in 200 colors. Prismacolor markers are available in sets of 12, 24, 48, 72, 156, and 200. And just like the availability of the Copic Sketch markers, they are available pretty much anywhere and you can also get them individually. But unlike the Copic brand of markers, these markers do not have refills. So if your Prismacolor marker runs out of ink, you gotta buy an entirely new marker. There's no refilling, there's no ink cartridges or whatever, you have to buy a whole another marker. Okay, so now that you guys got info on both brands, let's talk about their features. So right here I have a Copic Sketch marker and I have a Prismacolor marker. 
and right off the bat you can tell a very distinct difference between the two. A Copic marker has an oval barrel and on that barrel there's a color name and a code for the marker. So that way if your caps ever get mixed up you can always tell which cap goes to which. And what's good about these Copic markers is that they have the ink like engraved or printed on the barrel so that way it doesn't rub off or anything. So that's a good thing about that. That way if you end up with like similar colors in your collection you won't get yourself mixed up. And there's also a nifty line on these markers that tell you which side is the brush tip because these markers have a brush tip and a chisel tip on them. There are Copic markers made by the same brand that have a chisel tip and a fine tip on it, you know, like most cheap markers. Those are called the Copic Original or the Copic Classic. So yeah, Copic markers do come in more than three forms, but we're just gonna focus on the Copic Sketch for now. Now onto the Prismacolor marker. But not to downgrade on the Prismacolor ones, but they seem cheaply made. The reason I say that is because the Prismacolor ones, they have a sticker label on them indicating what colored ink this marker lays down. But what some people may find an issue is that over time, while you're using the marker, the sticker may fray apart a little bit, which makes the marker look old. There's also a sticker label on the cap, which indicates the color and like an oddly determined code for the marker. What I mean by oddly coded is, if you take a look at the Prismacolor chart right here. If you go by the numbers, then it looks like the next number would be the same hue, but really it isn't. But it doesn't bother me, but it's just a little bit confusing because it makes it seem like you're just placing random numbers on random markers. But now let's talk about the ink that the Prismacolor is laid down. So when you put Prismacolor ink to the paper, the colors are so vibrant it looks like a printed piece. But blending them is not easy. But speaking of blending, Prismacolors do come in two different forms. They come with a chisel tip and a fine tip, you know, like regular cheap markers. But they also come with a brush tip, but on the other side of that brush tip marker would be a fine tip. Not a chisel tip like the Copic markers would, but a fine tip. So we got brush fine and chisel fine. A lot of the time I use chisel tip markers because I mainly use Prismacolors for backgrounds. So when I'm drawing backgrounds, I like to get like a flat color in place and then go from there. And with the chisel tip on a Prismacolor marker, it really helps. And in a way, it kind of cuts the time in half and then using like a chisel tip or a brush tip on a Copic marker, that can really cut the time in half. But at this point, you guys have enough information on the two brands. And based off the information I gave you, it can really help you determine which marker brand will work best for you. But to better help you make that decision, I'm gonna split my drawing in half, do one side with Copic markers, do the other side with Prismacolors. Let's go. So right off the bat, Copic markers are more dominant when it comes to blending because Copic markers are notorious for having a brush tip. Many people find that to be useful when it comes to creating certain effects with traditional art. Not a lot of people see much of that when it comes to using Prismacolor markers, which is why some artists, including myself at the time I was using Prismacolor markers, would consider using mixed media. That includes colored pencil, watercolors, or any other media than markers. In short, to get super cool effects with traditional art, we have Copic markers themselves, and then Prismacolors plus a lineup of other mediums. Which is not a disadvantage for artists because some artists may like to use colored pencils as like a completion for their piece. And maybe there are some effects that Copic markers can't do because they are alcohol markers. They have the same aspect as all alcohol marker brands. Like when you put it to the paper, there's no going back. Now for the Prismacolor side, most of the markers I used for this side were chisel tip markers and already, and right off the bat, the blending was not easy to do. But just an FYI, if you are blending with Prismacolor markers, their chisel tips specifically, try going around in a circular motion. That way when you're working with Prismacolor markers, you can just go back and forth, back and forth, to get them blending going. But some of the Prismacolor markers that I'm using for this video are like two or three years old. Because like I said from the beginning, I did start out using Prismacolor markers for my illustrations. So some of the markers I have now, maybe two or three years old, I did purchase some Prismacolor markers prior to making this video. So some of the ones I am using are new, some are old. But like I brought up earlier, the sticker will help determine how old the marker is. But as you can see, in terms of color vibrancy, you do start to see some flat color being used throughout the piece. And when I say vibrant, I mean saturated, but not very, very saturated, like a good amount of saturation. Like sometimes when you're using Copic markers, you may see like a pale red going on when you put it to the paper when you were expecting like a very vibrant red. Copics do lay down a vibrant ink to the paper, but Prismacolors really do it better. So that's the finished result of my so that's the finished result of my marker comparison between Copic markers on the left hand side and Prismacolor markers on the right hand side. And now you guys can see a direct comparison between the two. 
But now we reach the end of the video, and I hope I did give you guys some enlightenment on which brand to choose. But if you chose Copics or if you chose Prism Colors, let me know down in the comments below. But if you did like the video, give it a like and a comment, subscribe if you haven't, and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. I got my nigga like Pat